So ISMS, it's a, it stands for, as uh, you may know, it stands for Information Security Management Systems. And uh, in this webinar, we are going to talk about conducting the audit. First, I will uh, present myself. Thank you, Imtirella, for introducing me first. Uh, I won't uh, go uh, into details again uh, because Imtirella already uh, introduced me, so I will pass this. Let's get started. Uh, ISMS lead auditors' knowledge. This is the uh, basics that, uh, or what uh, an, an auditor should know and should be able to do. So the lead auditor must know and understand information security, including principles, fundamentals, concepts, fundamental concepts and standards, best practices and law uh, regulations as well. So what does this mean? It means that uh, to be an information security, you need to have a background on uh, and uh, having a knowledge about the fundamental concepts, including the including principles, information security, fundamentals, and as well standards. Uh, in this standard, uh, you need to, to understand uh, the requirements and the controls. The controls are very, very important in the impl when implementing standards, uh, especially for this, what I'm uh, called today to talk uh, in 27001. You need to know annex controls, which uh, till now we uh, we are going to discuss later on that uh, 114 controls that were in in uh, 2013, and now they are a little bit changed. They are a little bit updated, but we will talk uh, about later. So in this beginning of the webinar, I will try to uh, express or tell some of the ISMS. Uh, uh, conducting the audit, how to conduct an audit in ISMS, Information Security Management System. And as well, I will take some, probably I will take some examples during the way uh, to show you or to tell you based on my experience uh, in the uh, government organizations, uh, public and private sector as well. So during the audit as well, uh, you need, before starting the audit, to understand and be able to participate in ISMS auditing related activities with different stakeholders. You need to know, understand, and be able to audit ISMS projects with some, which some of them can be without any implementation nor understanding. This is where I'm going to focus later on when uh, you, when the, you know, the organization or public or private sector uh, doesn't have anything implemented and you need to audit or to advise them how to do that and uh, you need to guide them during the way. So in the audit initiation, the auditor first of all need to establish contact with auditee confirm communication channels with the auditees representatives, confirm the authority to conduct the audit. So you need you need to make uh, to make it uh, clear to the uh, to the auditees that uh, you are you have authority to do that, how you will do that by expressing your knowledge and your probably during before before you engage in the audit, you will need to express your to show the certificate uh accreditation body of your certificate your background and everything else you need to pro to provide relevant information on the audit objectives scope criteria methods and audit team composition including including as well any technical experts uh i will, I will have to say that the uh, in uh, iso 27001 update in 2022 uh it may probably be uh, essential of having uh, technical experts with you, or uh, for example, my case, I am uh, a technical as well. I used to work in IT and I have very, very large, very long time, uh, I mean, background. I have 27, uh, 27 plus years uh, of work experience, first in IT and then information security and cybersecurity as well. Uh, you need to request access to relevant information for planning purposes. So during the audit, you need to have uh, 
access to every place that it's needed or it's in, in within the scope of the audit criteria. Determine applicable statu uh, statutory, statutory and regulatory requirements and other relevant requirements. So not every company has the same applicable uh, statutory and regular regulatory requirements. For example, for those companies that uh, uh, deal with the data, a lot, a lot of data of uh, people in, I will take an example with the uh, private information or private identifiable information from uh, European Union, you need to, you need to include as well EU GDPR, which stands for European Union General Data Protection Regulation. You need to confirm the agreement with the audit regarding the extent of the disclosure and treatment of confidential information. This, it's a must, for example, in, in, in our area here, where as well in Kosovo, the uh, EU GDPR has been implemented in data protection law. So you need to to sign the no NDAs, non-disclosure agreements, and uh, other relevant documents with the uh, government uh, government entities and uh, public sector for when doing this uh, audit. You need to make arrangements for the audit, including the schedule. Determine uh, any location-specific arrangements for access, health and safety, security, confidentiality, etc. So. This has to do with the with yourself, with the auditor. Uh, you need to make sure that uh, you have been uh, you have been provided with all necessary information uh, for your health, safety, security, and as well for your uh, for confidentiality of your documents that you are having with you. Agree on the attendance of observers and the need for guides or interpreters for the audit team. So in some cases you may do the audit for the organization that is uh, abroad of your con abroad from your country and the their language is uh, different so you need to make sure that uh, before starting audit uh, you have uh, your translator or the organization will have one for you determine any any areas uh, of interest concerns concerns or risk to the audit in relation to the specific audit resolve issues regarding composition of the audit team with the audit or audit plan. So you need to make sure that you present the paper of uh, uh, when doing the agreement, how many uh, auditors will be with you. So it has to be a lead auditor. If it's a small company, a uh, lead auditor will be enough. But if it's a bigger company and uh, they, are, they have different departments and different locations to audit, so uh, you need to have uh, in your composition as well other auditors, audit auditors. So I already said that uh, you need to, to establish contact with the audit. It depends whether the audit to be is to be con conducted is internal or external. In some cases, you you will be invited, as I've been invited in uh, some so so uh, in some companies here in Kosovo to do the internal audit. They did the preparation. They have uh, their auditors, ISO 27001 uh, lead auditors and implementers, but as well, they wanted before going to uh, to look for certification or for, for, for external audit, they wanted to make sure that from uh, the other perspective of the other auditor to have an internal audit as well. And uh, for the external audit, uh, it's, uh, as I said, you need to do these uh, uh pre pre contacts so this is the i'm going back to the page where the external audit will have to to have these 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 uh these bullets here so when the uh, isms lead auditor is the internal auditor auditor of the organization the establishment contact it takes from of an audit Announcement. So you just need to make sure that the uh, head of the head of the company or the top management will uh, make sure, or they will request from the internal auditor to do the audit. So you you need to make sure that that announcement not doesn't go from you, but goes from the uh, high management, top uh, top management, board of directors, or the decision makers in that company. So the audit will be 
much easier. This, audit, uh, this announcement can be communicated via an email or during a meeting with the key personnel and other interested parties. The ISMS lead auditor, as an external auditor, should establish contact with the auditee by sending an audit engagement letter. So during the audit initiation, you need to determine the feasibility of the audit. What should be considered when the, determining the feasibility of the audit? It's uh, that you have sufficient and appropriate uh, information for planning and conducting the audit, adequate cooperation from the auditee, adequate time and resources for conducting the audit. So resources include access to information and communication technology. Determine the feasibility of the audit. The purpose of determining the feasibility of the audit is to provide reasonable confidence that the ISMS audit objectives can be achieved. The feasibility study is based on the analysis of the current operations and strategic ob objectives of the auditee with respect to ISO 27001 requirements. The ISMS lead auditor should conduct a feasibility study to ensure that all business-related issues are identified and take into con consideration prior executing the audit. So now we go to the audit planning. For the audit planning, you need to perform the document documentation review. Documentation review in audit is the process of inspecting and examining to determine the adequacy of the documentation. Documentation review is done for the purpose of gathering information to understand the audit's operation and preparing audit activities and applicable audit work documents, for example, on a process, functions, etc. Establishing overview of the extent of the document, documented information to determine possible conformity to audit criteria and detect possible areas of concern, such as deficiencies, conflicts, or omissions. So performing the documentation review, uh, document information, documented information should include, but not be limited to management system documents and records, previous audit reports, documentation review, whereas the review should take into account the context of the audit organization, the context of the audit program. So in this part where the requirements are management system documents and records, previous audit reports, you may come to the situation when you are doing the, uh, as an external auditor, you do internal audit for the other organization or other company, that you may not find uh, like documents as um, are uh, described in the uh, the terminology in the ISO 27001, uh, like policies, procedures, forms, etc. You may find regulation, standard operating procedures. You may find the different naming of documents. So you need to take in consideration all these records they have, and. Uh, in these uh, companies or organization, usually I never found previous audit report that is it has been done before. The outcomes of uh, op uh, operating an information security management system consist of set of documents required by the ISO 27001 and deemed necessary by the organization auditee. The amount and complexity of documents depends on the organization size and operations. The first activity of the audit planning is to perform a general review of all documented information. When planning an ISMS audit, the standard mandates the adoption of risk-based approach based on the audit program and the documents provided by the audit team. A risk-based approach to planning refers to process that focus on analyzing and managing risk to establish an effective audit plan. The content of the ISMS audit plan is unique for each audit to be conduct conducted. Audit plan can differ whether this is the initial audit or sub uh, subsequent audit or between internal and, and external audit, as I mentioned it uh, a little bit earlier. <laughs> I apologize. So the, an audit plan should include information that is sufficient and appropriate to conduct the ICMS audit activities. What should be considered when developing the audit plan? 
It should be considered the composition of the audit team and its overall comp competence, the appropriate sampling techniques, opportunities to improve the effectiveness and efficiency of the audit activities, the risk to achieving the audit objectives created by ineffective audit planning, the risk to the audit auditee created by performing the audit. We need to take all these considerations why uh, during the de development of the audit plan. So in this part, uh, audit planning should address or reference the following. The audit objectives, the audit scope, including identification of the organization and its functions, as well as processes to be audited. The audit criteria and uh, any reference documented information. So you may have uh, a document where, for example, uh, I did the audit uh, not not long time ago. It was a uh, last week in the United Nations here uh, in a mission in Kosovo, where the organization, as an organization, they don't uh, comply with any uh, rules or regulation in the local country where they operate. So the United Nations has their own policies, their own rules and regulations. So they obey by this information. So you may find, for example, a document where the reference, reference documentation or reference documentation is based on the uh, is based on United Nations documents as an example for this part. So the location, physical and virtual, dates, expected times and duration of audit activities to be conducted, including meetings with the auditees, management. The need for the audit team to familiarize themselves with the auditees, facilities and process. So you need to familiarize yourself with the uh, facilities, with the uh, pro processes they, they, they have. Kind of you need uh, very fast to make yourself as a part of the company so you can, you can understand the, the organizational context. The audit methods to be used, including the extent to which audit sampling is needed to obtain sufficient audit evidence the roles and the responsibilities of the audit team members, as well as guides and observers or interpreters, as we said before. The allocation of appropriate resources based on uh, based upon consideration of the risk and opportunities related to the activities that are to be audited. Audit planning should take into account the following uh, as appropriate, the identification of the audit is representative, uh, representatives for the audit, the working and reporting language of the audit, where this is different from the language of the auditor or the auditee or both. The audit reports topic, logistics and communication arrangements, including specific arrangements for the location to be audited, any specific actions to be taken due to address risk and achieve, achieving the audit objectives and opportunities arising, matters related to confidentiality and information security, any follow-up actions from a previous audit or other source, example, lesson learned, project reviews, etc. Any follow-up activities to the planned audit, coordination with the other audit activities in case of a joint audit. So this all depends what kind of the audit you are doing and uh, uh, with whom you are doing or where and as well where you are doing. Everything, any, any organization is the uh, same, so you need always to have in your mind that uh, you, you, you need to have the uh, open approach to the audit and you need to, to be relaxed during the presentation, during the opening meeting and uh, or, or as well during the whole process, you need to be like open and make the audit team as much as comfortable with you as possible as well, vice versa. So this is an example. Uh, you can see here uh, audit objectives, list of the audit objectives, audit scope, include the ISMS audit scope, reference standards, physical, virtual, ISMS lead auditor. So this is an example of uh, planning. So you put this, uh, all this information here, kind of a table of yours, and uh, the shadows, schedules of the uh, opening meeting, documentation review, ISMS requirements, ISMS controls, closing meeting, and audit reports. So you need to put these dates 
uh, in cooperation or in coordination with the audit uh, audit team. Audit execution. So the audit execution is a phase of the audit process that follows after audit planning. The audit execution phase covers meetings, opening and closing, documentation review, verification of collected information, generating findings and preparing conclusions. Audit execution is carried out, carried out, carried out by the lead auditor with the assistance of the audit team and is considered the most important phase in the audit. So you, 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 as for example, as a lead auditor myself, I go to the audit uh, to audit the organization with my audit uh, audit team. I give them directions, I give them uh, guidance how to do it, with whom to talk, how to talk, what kind of the information to to look for, and uh, do the uh, the the writings in the paper or in the in the in the form that uh, I will provide to them. So at the end, we every um, if it's going to be, uh, for example, five days, 10 days, depends on the organization, uh, together each day at the end of the day together and discuss the findings and uh, try to prepare for the final audit report. Opening meeting. Before the opening meeting, it is important for the organization to assign the roles and the responsibilities of the guides and observers. Guides and observers are appointed to accompany to accompany the ISMS audit team and uh, any means. Guides and observers should not influence or interfere with the conduct of the audit. So the uh, the company that you are you are auditing or the organization, public or private, doesn't matter. Uh, you need you need to make sure that the, the top management has assigned the uh, responsible people. Uh, to guide you through the process, to be as well to observe. So they need to guide you where to go, which office, to whom to talk, whom to meet, although you will take this information as well in the paper. And it's very important not to be uh, not to be influenced. Importance of the opening meeting. An important uh, opening meeting is an important event prior to starting the audit. An auditor is responsible to organize the opening meeting and invite the organizations or uh, organizations or audit rep representatives from different process to be audited. So during the opening meeting, you need to have all all interested parties for that uh, audit scope. If there is to be, uh, as an example. The IT uh, to be audited. Uh, you need to have a IT director there, the director of the human resources, logistics, transport section as well, and any other department. So you 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 need to to gather all of them and explain that this audit is uh, is uh, how it's going to be and how you are going to execute this audit. It's very important. For example, in some cases where I had an experience. When doing the audit in the in the uh, public uh, public uh, sector uh, organization, where the other agency has uh, has called to do the the uh, uh, audit to that uh, to that our organization, and uh, the organization will need to be audited. They didn't uh, uh, well expected the audit team. I was a lead auditor in that uh, during that audit, and I remember very very well. Uh, it was maybe four or five years ago. So when we approached there, the only guy who knew that the audit will be conducted it was the head of the that organization. Anyone else was uh, not informed, and it was uh, kind of the government wanted to to audit that uh, public organization. So the head of, of uh, that organization was uh, uh, already informed, but not other stakeholders or interested parties during the audit uh, or what the audit scope was uh, during that audit. Uh, it was very, very hard time for me and for my colleagues to convince all of them 
and the opening meeting, and we didn't have just one opening meeting. We had uh, continuously uh, two or three other meetings until we uh, we 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 told them that this audit doesn't have to because you know the organizations that they never had the ISMS audit or information security audit based audit. They only had finance audit and they had some reportings and everything what got to do with money. And especially in some countries like small countries that has gone uh, out of the conflict and uh, the corruption and you know everything can 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 be part of, of this uh, non trusty from the audities. So we had hard, very hard time to convince them, first of all, that this is, doesn't have to do with the uh, financial audit. It has to do with the information security audit and to help them to provide them with the information in the end uh, that uh, where they are uh, stacking, where they are lacking, uh, get, where they have gaps, what they need to improve, what kind of risk they may face, and etc. So we had a very hard time to convince them to do that. So not always is so easy. The easiest part is when uh, the organization is uh, well informed, all organization that the audit will, will be conducted and the extra uh, to say cherish in the, in the cake is when the uh, company is already certified and you need to do the recertification and you need to do the audit for some of the companies that they are not certified but they are well prepared so everybody knows why this uh, audit is being uh, is being done to for them the purpose of the organizing and opening meeting is to introduce the audit team and their roles as well and confirm the audit plan and communication channels so you need to confirm the planning communication channels how you will communicate some organization may uh, may a, a request from you that you need to have uh, during the communication, uh, some of them they use uh, email, some of them they use telephone, some of them mobile uh, mobile apps uh, like uh, like uh, WhatsApp, like Viber, for example, uh, Signal or whatever, or they have their uh, their own uh, communicating uh, communication channel, so they uh, they share with you. During the ISMS opening meeting, this is an example. So you go with the introduction of the audit uh, auditees representative and the SMS audit team. Confirm the SMS audit scope. Confirm the SMS audit objectives. Confirm the assessment standard against which the audit will be conducted. Confirm the summarized details of the audit plan. Confirm the communication channels. Confirm the language to be used during the audit. Confirm the on-site safety, security, and emergency procedures emphasize the importance of confidentiality and information security of the audit confirm how audit findings are generated and reported concerns questions raised by the auditees representatives let's talk a little bit about the internal control as well uh, again internal controls of processes policies or procedures that provide assurance regarding the achievement of an organization's objectives related to safeguarding its assets Operations and compliance with laws and regulations and industry specific standards. The effectiveness of the internal controls can be assessed during the planning phase by evaluating the entity level controls, internal controls, testing the control design, taking corrective actions, and monitoring. So, collecting the audit evidence during the audit execution, we have mentioned that you need to do the collecting audit uh, evidence. You need to do the interviews, interview the audit representatives and obtain the needed information, ask how daily activities are performed and determine whether the organization follows the process it claims it does. You need to do a review of documents, review the ownership of documents, review whether they, everything has been documented as required by ISO 27001 audit. The auditors audit checklist, the auditors use the checklist to look for evidence that the process being audited meets the requirements of the defined process. So you need to have a checklist uh, of the all controls from Annex uh, A and uh, have some, some part in the table where you will do the 
findings you will write down and in the end you will review yourself and do the audit report based on based on that so sometimes uh, during the interview, you may find out that uh, the company is, uh, it, they have the documentation, they have maybe everything in proper, but they don't use it, some of the, or part of the, uh, of the organization, they don't use these documents and they don't know that they exist. So you need to do then review of the documents, interviews, take notes, and do the audit sampling, as for example, you you may uh, you may be guided from the top management or the director of the department of the organization, one of your uh, in one of the companies uh, like human resources, and you will ask them for a document for termination. They will provide you and they will tell you the processes and uh, procedures also are in place, and they they follow these uh, processes and procedures. And when you interview one of the staff there. And you ask them for doing their work, how they do their work. You may find that uh, there is a gap or there is a, uh, a escape they do from based on on their knowledge, and they don't do be, based on the procedures and process they have established themselves. <laughs> Collecting uh, audit evidence. Example, this is an example. So ISMS documentation checklist, mandatory documents. You put uh, standard clauses in one side, on the left side, and you put here uh, a status. And you write down the status of that doc document, mandatory document, uh, document required, the title, reference, and you put the notes and comments yourself in, in, in the right side. So this is this is just an example. Then you need to uh, to do the audit uh, to evaluate the audit findings. The evaluation of the audit findings is done through meeting of the audit team member prior preparing the audit conclusion. The auditor must evaluate the audit findings against the audit criteria and group them based on their importance and impact on the organization. The purpose of evaluating audit finding is to determine whether the Obtained audit evidence is appropriate and sufficient. Audit finding, conclusion, conclusion and recommendations. Now, so in the audit findings, there are uh, conformity, uh, conformity uh, requirements that, that are confirming the requirements of the ISO 27001, the fulfillment of that requirement. Non-conformity, you have major non-conformities and minor non-conformities, and you have the opportunity, opportunities for improvement. An audit conclusion can be defined as the outcome of an audit after consideration of the audit objectives and all audit findings. The audit conclusion should be clearly stated in the final version of the audit report. The ISMS lead auditor should organize a pre-closing meeting in order to review audit findings and other appropriate information collected during the audit, agree on the audit conclusion, prepare recommendations, and discuss follow-up audits. In both of these cases, if applicable, the ISMS lead auditor should ensure that audit conclusions addresses at least the following issues to the extent of conformity with the audit criteria, and robustness of the management system, including the effectiveness of the management system in meeting in the intent outcomes. The identification of risk and effectiveness of action taken by the audit to address risk. The effective implementation, maintenance and improvement of the management system, etc. An effective audit recommendation addresses the root cause of an issue current status, implementation method, and agreed timeframes. Audit management is responsible to manage the implementation of proposed audit recommendations. Management may create a system to track the implementation progress of these recommendation, recommendations and assign the responsible to the internal auditor and the key employees to monitor the process against the estimated timeframe. Now to the reporting. So before you do the pre-closing meeting, 
uh, before you do the closing meeting, you, you need to do the pre-closing meeting. The pre-closing meeting is held in order to discuss and resolve all of the issues during the audit. An auditor may prepare a pre-closing meeting agenda, which consists of notifying the auditing management and key employees for the meeting, sharing and discussing the audit issues with the management and key employees, receiving approval from management for the presented issues relevant to its audit objectives, revising and preparing the draft audit report, sending the draft audit report to the management for review, receiving feedback from the auditee management, finalizing the audit report uh the audit report prior to the official closing meeting so whenever you do the audit you do the conclusions you do the uh you don't you you do not do the final 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 uh, report immediately so you prepare the document you do the findings you do the report based on your knowledge and based on your findings based on evaluation of the documents that you have uh, you have reviewed and uh you discuss with top management of the findings. They may be not interested or you lack any information. You were not informed by the uh, by the auditee assigned to you or the guys that uh, are, were responsible to send you to, uh, to the locations or the documents requested. They were not uh, showing you all. So it, everything you need to do prior uh, closing meeting to do a pre-closing meeting and discuss all these findings and the report with the top management and the interested parties, uh, management and the uh, uh, interested parties to have the the report as as, as best as uh, they 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 can. The preparation of the audit report marks the final phase of an audit. The lead auditor should prepare the audit report based on the audit program by taking into consideration the auditee's requirements. The audit report is an official opinion of the audit findings, and it can be used to ensure compliance with laws, regulations, and standards, also as a tool for investment plans or decision-making within the organization. As for example, uh, now, I mean, not not as an example, but the all the uh, information security standards like ISO 27001, NIST 800, and other other information security standards are based on risk. So, if the company deals with the information, as I said, uh, the high risk of getting fined by EU GDPR in Europe is uh, by not implementing, for example, uh, uh, anonymization of the data, or by not uh, encrypting the data in uh, in uh, on transport and the, in uh, in the hard disk or in the servers uh, so you need to comply with these kind of regulations as an example the different organization have different uh, different uh, view the distribution of the audit report is confidential and can be distributed in a hard and soft copies in hard copies the audit report should be distributed in sealed envelopes only to the individuals in the distribution list. Soft copies of the audit report are usually sent via email to the individuals in the distribution list. Its best way is to be encrypted and password protected. So another message or email or by phone, you send the password to, to the individuals who are sending the, uh, the final report. When distributing the audit report, the SMS lead auditor should take appropriate measures to ensure the confidentiality. So this means, as I said, to encrypt the data. The measures may include confidentiality, confidentiality non-disclosure agreements between parties involved in the audit, state confidentiality in the audit report, or implemented security measures such as encrypt the audit report prior to signature. So in the closing meeting, the SMS lead auditor is responsible to organize the closing meeting. The main purpose of the closing meeting is, is to present the audit findings and conclusions to the auditee. The closing meeting usually is, att is attended by the auditee's representative, representative that, uh, that is responsible for the audited functions, processes, the audit client, other audit team members and other relevant interested parties as determined by the audit client and or auditee. So you need to have all of them that you have audited, the management of uh, these departments, 
to have all interested parties or stakeholders during the process or for the process to make uh, to make them aware about the closing meeting and uh, present the uh, the, the uh, final report. So this is uh, a ta uh, example table of the closing meeting uh, uh, report or a document. First of all, you have to thank the auditee for cooperation, review the SMS audit scope, review the SMS audit objectives, and go through the process, present all findings, present the report structure and content. The audit report, the report is provided to the auditee, and if required, to interested parties as well. Present the corrective actions and recommendations if applicable. Explain the reasons for follow-up audit if applicable, applicable as, as well in this part. Concerns, questions raised by the auditees, representatives, etc. So now the follow-up audit. Uh, we're going to talk about a little bit about the uh, follow-up audit. And during the audit, uh, the ISMS lead auditor may have identified the need for correct, corrective actions and potential opportunities for the improvement. The OTT is responsible to ensure that these actions are undertaken within the agreed time frame. So the follow-up audit is done, especially when the company is getting certified and they receive a certificate, they had some minor uh, uh, or uh, improvement. They need to do some improvements. You did some minor, minor findings and they had to do the corrective actions to those findings. And you need to, to follow up the audit for uh, after one year to see if they, they are uh, now in place or if they are improved since last time. The complete, completion and effectiveness of the action should be verified. Follow up audits, audits are a result of such verifications. The outcomes of the follow up audits should be reported to the audit program manager and report to the audit client for management review. Just I'm seeing some messages, uh, but uh, we'll go we'll go these uh, to to answer the all messages. I apologize. I would not stop now in the uh, answering the questions, but uh, we'll go to the end. and uh, maybe during the during the uh, presentation of this uh, of this on this webinar, you may find your uh, answer in this, but as well, I will I will try to to answer all of your questions at the end. So surveillance audit, a surveillance audit is a result of the initial audit and the surveillance audit program. An initial audit may be required by laws, regulations, and standards, and organizations need uh, needs as well. Usually, the initial audit is conducted on site and includes documentation review. The surveillance audit program is prepared based on the initial audit results in order to monitor the effectiveness of the organization's process or systems and the implemented corrective actions. Now we arrive to the part where the uh, changes are uh, between the standards. So I have put in some information here. I really apologize. I cannot share a lot of information. Otherwise, it will be like I'm I'm, attend I'm uh, giving you the, the whole program. Uh, the ISO 27001-2022 gives greater emphasis on cybersecurity and cyber risk due to new regulations and data protection and additional legislation on security of information. The new standard has included the cybersecurity concepts such as identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover on the control categories. This means that each control show its effects on organizations when implemented. Operational, people, physical, or technological controls presented by ISO 27001 can be implemented to either identify, protect, detect, respond, or recover from the cyber risk. We're going to go uh, in overview of the uh, controls from uh, the clauses of the uh, 2013. So, so the standard overview limitations, and you have some clauses here that I have presented as they were or they are in uh, 27001 2013 version. 
And now we are going to go to the uh, next page and going to show the new ISO 27001 information security, cybersecurity, and privacy protection information security management system requirements. So you have now context of the organization, leadership, planning, support, operation, performance, evaluation, and improvement. Now we have four domains in this uh, new, new update. We have organizational controls, people controls, physical controls, technological controls. As for example, in the prior, uh, uh, prior uh, uh, version, it is uh, you. We had to, to deal with the number eleven here, for example, physical and environmental uh, controls. Then you have uh, uh, in the physical physical controls you had logging, unlogging, supply, uh, etc. They have been combined as one and uh, called now as a physical control. We can imagine now with these new technologies that why why this is done first of all is done based on risks uh, presented during these years to the organizations and the data data breaches we hear every day so they had to make sure something uh, to make something that uh, it's uh, operational for a long time and it can control the risks as they rise <clears throat> from my opinion <clears throat> As, and from my experience, I can I can say that uh, the uh, new new version of ISO twenty seven thousand and one uh, this 20, 20, uh, 20, 2022, it's based on the, on the uh, as well is based on the on the calling of the uh, uh, President uh, Biden's executive order for zero trust. So. When you have implemented uh, zero trust in the uh, in the concept of the of the documents and the concept of the standards of the standard, then we need we need to consider that everything is risk until otherwise proved. So based on that, uh, the new standard is uh, more uh, in technical side, technological controls, people controls, and etc. The new updated version of ISO 27001 gives greater emphasis to data protection by providing controls that organizations can implement to prevent data leak, define information monitoring activities, delete sensitive information properly, set up processes that support the organization, determine which data needs to be masked, who can access masked data, and how to mask the data. This is kind of, you know, from the general data regulation, general EU GDPR. Uh, regulation that is a uh, need to know basis. So uh, the access to the employees and access to the uh, organization, access in the organization by employees need to, to be on need to know basis. Set up a process that supports the organization, determine which types of websites increase the risk of data breaches if, if frequent. For example, it's, it's you see, you, it's on, on, the, on the technical side. One of the areas affected by the change of ISO 27001 uh, 2022 include leadership of organization. Considering that there are changes in the management system requirements, that means that actions should be taken by organization in order to identify changes needed and gaps in their current system in order to demonstrate compliance with the updated standard. Besides, the changes on the management system requirements controls presented on the Annex A have been merged. New controls have been added and most of them have been renamed and adapted in order to support organizations uh, ensure a higher level of security. Such changes require the leadership commitment to be implemented. Each activity carried out in the organization in order to transition from the ISO 27001-2013 to 2022 need to be approved by top management. The new control categories ensure that top management, top management is involved in each activity carried out for the implementation of controls. Such categories include organizational, people, physical, and technological categories. Organizational category of controls defined 37 controls. 
that concern with the de development and implementation of policies and procedures in order to ensure a high, higher level of information security in a corporate level. Such controls are useful for organizations to identify and implement all the necessary measures to prevent cyber crimes, information breaches, and reduce information risks. Some of the controls that uplift corporate security are listed below. So you can see policies of information security, classification of information, information security for use of cloud services, information security during the disruptions, information security law, roles and responsibilities, access control, information security incidents, management planning and preparation, intellectual property rights, threat intelligence, identify management, learning from information security incidents, private uh, private uh, identifiable information, legal status, the statutory, regulatory and contractual requirements, access rights, collection of evidence, documented operating procedures. Another area affected, affected by the standard change include the IT functions. The update of the information security controls has affected activities such as maintenance of technological systems and infrastructure. New technological controls have been established in order to ensure a higher level of security in organizations. Therefore, organizations going through transition have to implement the new controls affecting their IT functions. Some of the controls that affect the IT functions include threat intelligence, so you need to, to, to have a threat intelligence or to implement, manager, management of the technical vulnerabilities, you need to do some penetration tests and stuff like that, ICT readiness for business continuity, you need to have the backups and everything in place in case of uh, disturbance of the, for example, ISP, you need to have two ISPs, in case of one server is down, you need to have another server running your your uh, your your whatever work for the organization. You need to have information backup in case of something happens that you can rely on. Config configuration management, monitoring activities, information deletion, installation of software and operational systems. So these are the changes that. Uh, has affected the uh, update on the standard. Let's see now the difference. In the ISO 27002, the guide, uh, guide uh, guidance for information implement, for implementing the information security uh, management system or ISO 27001. <laughs> Control categories in 2013, we have 14. Now we have four only. Total controls in 2013, we had 114. Now we have 93. Control attributes, they were none in the 2013. Now we have control type, information security properties, cybersecurity properties, operational capabilities, security domain, and purpose. Uh, I mean, the control objective to control purpose was objective. Now it's a purpose. New controls. There are 11 new controls added to the to the 2022. This is 2013 Annex Control categories. And these are uh, new category controls by number in 2022. So this five, six, seven, and eight. They are cut, categorized in, in, a, in a four, so with people that have eight controls, organizational, 37 controls, technological, 34 controls, physical, 14 controls. What are these uh, uh, new controls? Threat intelligence, information security for use of cloud services, ICT readiness for business continuity. These were not before. Uh, physical security monitoring, configuration management, information deletion, data masking, data leakage prevention, uh, monitoring activities, web filtering, secure calling. And uh, I think this is the last page of the presentation. The organizations that are 
uh, that already have an information security management system in place and are certified against ISO 27001 2013 should implement the changes to their management system within three years from when ISO 27001 2022 was published. I thank you everyone for being patient. I hope I didn't go too fast. I hope I, I, I got you some information from my perspective. I prepared this, uh, this uh, presentation for you.